Want to know the top 10 questions to ask a realtor when buying a home in the San Francisco Bay Area? Don't miss this video as we're covering this topic right after this. Welcome back, my name is Dale Corpus. I'm a realtor in the Tri-Valley area in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. I post videos every Friday about all things real estate. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at questions you should ask your real estate agent when purchasing a home. I always like talking to friends, family, and folks outside my marketplace who have purchased a home to learn about how their home buying process went and if there's anything that their agent did in their marketplace that I could add to the mix in my real estate business here in the San Francisco Bay Area. A lot of times what I'm hearing is that they had a less than stellar experience or that their agent wasn't at all that good. And they, they had to do all the work that they thought their agent was gonna do. And the worst part is, is that it's not all that surprising at all. There are a lot of great agents out there and there's a lot of not so great agents out there, but when I go further and ask them how they found their agent, it usually seems like they did very little homework. Maybe they went into an open house, wanted that specific house and used whatever agent was holding that house open. Or maybe their aunt told them to use a certain agent, or maybe their aunt was their agent. You see what I'm saying? The point to all of this is it doesn't seem like some buyers out there doing their homework when it comes to hiring a buyer's agent. For the amount of time that the buyers are spending on Zillow or Redfin or even their hard-earned weekends going out and researching homes in person, some buyers aren't doing their due diligence to vet the real estate agent. And when problems occur down the line, they wonder how they got to that point. And it's for that reason that I have 10 questions you should ask your agent when looking to buy a house. So let's begin. Question number one, how long have you been in business? And there's no right answer here, but there is a wrong answer. You probably don't want to hire an agent that has only been around for one year or less. You want to make sure your agent is capable and has some experience. A 20 year track record isn't necessary. Just make sure that you won't be your real estate agent's first transaction. You probably don't want your agent to tell you that they just got their license two months ago. You want to make sure that your agent has experience. You can't teach experience, so first and foremost, make sure your agent has been around the block a couple times. Question two, how did you get into real estate? You're going to be spending a lot of time with your agent. You want to know them on a personal basis and this question will uncover your realtor's motivation to get up every day and serve you as a client. Again, there's no right answer here, but get to know your agent, how they operate because most realtor client relationships break down over lack of communication or miscommunication. So when it comes to negotiating showings or communication in general, you want to understand where they are coming from and how they think as a person. Ask the why question. Why did you get into real estate? It's going to tell you more about who your agent is as a person, which will help your communication significantly down the line. Question three, how many clients are you working with? You want your agent to have enough time to dedicate to you and your search. But at the same time, you don't want to be your agent's only client. Why not? Well, what happens when the deal goes sideways and you're thinking about backing out? Well, that agent only has a one shot commission on that month, right? If that agent only has one client, that agent needs to put food on the table. They might try to save the deal when you don't want the house anymore because you're their only hope for a commission that month. And what if your agent says they're working with 50 clients currently? Is that a bad thing? Well, it probably means that your agent is a very successful realtor and has efficient systems and processes in place to get things done. Now, you never want your agent's schedule to cost you a showing or to delay getting an offer in. However, on the level of service you are looking for, you should hope that your agent has a few too many clients rather than too few clients. 
Question four, will I be working with you or your team? The team model is becoming more and more popular. Be sure to know what type of relationship you are signing up for. I think the team model is okay and don't see much wrong with it. Usually the way it works is that there will be a showing agent, there will be an administrator who handles all the paperwork, and there will be a lead buyer's agent who will do all the negotiating. It's just like going to the dentist. The head dentist that's been in the business for 20 plus years and his name's on the big letters outside the building, that dentist is not the one checking you in for your appointment, nor the one cleaning your teeth, nor the one scheduling your next appointment six months down the line. The head dentist's job is to come in in the last five minutes, check up on everything, make sure there's a clean operation running, make sure that everything is smooth sailing and to make sure that you're happy. That's the way to think about the team model. Like the dentist will have all the people in place to help you out, the T model is the same sort of thing. I think that both ways are fine, team and individual, just make sure you know what you're signing up for. So there's no strange agents that you've never heard of or never met before showing you homes. So question five, what area do you primarily do business in? What area do you primarily do business in? This is kind of a two part question. So part one is you wanna confirm that the agent knows the area that you're looking in. Number two, you wanna confirm that your agent is comfortable and that they wanna spend time in that neighborhood because if you were to call me up and tell me you wanna look at houses one hour outside my primary marketplace, I might cut our meeting prematurely. It might not be a good fit just depending on a few aspects. Now your agent doesn't need to know every single block of the area that you're looking in. Uh, they probably should, but that's a completely different story. But your agent should be extremely comfortable and knowledgeable in the target market you're looking at. Question number six, what sets you apart from other agents? It's 2022 guys and the real estate industry is under attack as it should be because it's very difficult sometimes to tell the difference between two real estate agents. Sometimes it's difficult to see the value of what one real estate agent brings to the table what they do differently or what sets them up sets them apart they should have an immediate answer and i'll give you an example i'm here in the san francisco bay area specifically in the tri-valley that's my local marketplace i've been living in the tri-valley for the last 15 years i'm an sf bay area native i was born in the bay area and i have a youtube channel to teach buyers and sellers about the local marketplace and how to maneuver through the Tri-Valley real estate market. I've been both in the mortgage and real estate industry since 2001. I know the nuances of both real estate and, and loans as I used to be a loan officer prior to being a full-time realtor. So I understand all those nuances of getting a loan. I live in the inventory that I sell. I own my own home in San Ramon. This is my town. People see me around town. They see me at the gym. Um, I'm involved in my kids' activities like uh, scouting uh, and their swim team, and I'm well connected in the community. Um, I'm also connected with a lot of local agents. Uh, because of my local agent connections, I'm able to get my clients into contract on homes sometimes uh, for inventory that they are not even able to find on the internet. I'm experienced and have over 50 five-star Zillow reviews. I have a proven track record that gets results. Question seven, how do your fees work? When you are purchasing real estate as a buyer, that buyer's agent commission should already be figured into your sales price and has already been set by the seller, which means there's no extra out-of-pocket expense for you. Sometimes though, some buyer's agents will have administrative fees or desk fees that are passed down to you at a closing. If they bring this up, ask them if they can waive the fee. A lot of times it's pretty common purchasing $100,000 worth of property uh, that they can waive a couple hundred dollars worth of fees, right? The last thing you wanna do is enter into a contract and not understand how you are paying. Question eight, after hearing my needs, what do you feel would be the best strategy moving forward? After an in-depth conversation with your agent, you should have a clear picture of the best way to find the property you're looking for. This could be a combination of setting up an automated search. I know you already get notifications from your real estate apps on your phone when a new property comes online. So the automated search is faster, but hopefully you're, uh, it has something in addition to that. See how creative your agent is. 
see all the things to look for. Maybe they recommend going to open houses. Maybe they'll recommend new construction options that you might haven't considered. Or maybe they know of off-market home opportunities that might fit your needs. After an in-depth conversation, you got to have some sort of plan. You got to plan to move forward and hopefully it's more than just an automated home search. Question nine, how will we communicate? Like I said earlier, most relationships break down over a lack of communication. Agent-client relationships, well, relationships break down in general because of lack of communication. So you have to be on the same page with your agent on how communication will take place. If your agent prefers weekly phone calls on Sunday evening, weekly phone calls to recap everything, and you prefer short, quick text messages throughout the week, since it's 2022 and who makes phone calls anymore? Well, you are gonna have a challenge communicating, right? Question 10, what questions do you have for me? This might be the most important question of them all. It's like going to a job interview and at the end of the interview, the interviewer will ask you, well, what questions do you have for me? And you say, oh, no more question, everything sounds good. Well, that will just make you look disinterested and ignorant, right? It makes you sound like you don't care, like you're not prepared. Uh, your agent should be all over you. How long have you been looking? What have you seen that you like? Have you put any offers in on any property? You know, things along these lines. Any question is better than no question. You know, the last thing you want is your agent saying, okay, sounds good. Let's set you up on an automated email and forget it, setting and forgetting, right? You don't want that. You don't want a passive agent. You would want a proactive agent that is genuinely interested in your home search. Guys, there you have it. The top 10 questions to ask your buyer's agent. On a related note, if you're in the market and still trying to find an agent to work with, don't miss my previous video on my five tips on how to choose a realtor. You can click on the link above for that and if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you're new to the buying process and curious to know what documents are needed for a pre-approval, click on the link in the description box below for my mortgage pre-approval checklist. Again, this is Dale Corpus from EXP Realty in San Ramon, California. I help buyers and sellers throughout the San Francisco Bay Area and Tri-Valley, and I'll see you on my next video.